Hello, and welcome to FreightWaves Global Supply Chain Week. This is the Ocean Freight Maritime segment. And what a great show we have today. And the subject of the, the discussion today, our fireside, is navigating volatility and unpredictability in the container shipping market. As you guys know, we were in container getting. Yeah, container freight rates are at all time highs, yet service levels are kind of iffy. Matter of fact, at all time lows. What does it all mean? It's causing stockouts for shippers, unbudgeted freight spend, CFOs pulling their hair out, logistics leaders sitting on their sofas mulling over what's next. Well, you know what? Today, we're in for a real treat. My good friend and CEO, of the New York Shipping Exchange, fondly known as NYSHEX, joins us. His name is Gordon Downs. Gordon, welcome to the virtual stage of FreightWaves. Great to be here, Steve. Thank you again for having me. Oh, lovely to, lovely to have you on our, uh, our dais today talking about NYSHEX and committed contracts and the market in general. Just before we get started, let me ask you a question. How are you doing through Container Geddon? Actually, our business, to, to many, uh, well, in many ways, actually benefits from the volatility in the market. So we've seen volumes increase, a lot of new shippers using NYSHEX to make their contracts committed, et cetera. So as much as this is causing a lot of damage to supply chains and so on, in, in many ways, we've been able to benefit from that. Well, I'm really, uh, that's terrific. And, and I know that's a, just a, a great uh, segue into um, our discussion today. Uh, you know, Gordon, one of the things that's really interesting, you know, when I started producing content for Freight Waves, even though um, you know, um, in my stewardship at Ocean Audit, I, I have my uh, my day job. But one of the things that I found is that um, a lot of people um, getting a lot of great new audience members that might not have the full um, scoop on NYSHEX and who you are and, and what NYSHEX does. Could you give the audience a, a brief rundown on the company and its uh, and its um, and its features and benefits to the to the trade. Sure. So, in a nutshell, the reason why we started NYSHEX and our mission is to enable more reliable shipping through effective contracts. And the the underlying problem that we're solving is that many of the service contracts or freight contracts that carriers and shippers sign these days are, to some extent, sort of legacy contracts that go date back to the, the pre-conference era. And there's a lot of ambiguity, room for interpretation. And of course, without a clear framework for what is in fact going to be delivered by both parties in a contract, it becomes very difficult for the parties to fulfill that contract. And the more loopholes there exist in a contract, the more sort of opportunities either party has to, to break away from the terms of that contract. So in essence, NYSHIX is bringing technology, um, a framework for contracting which is standardized and a lot of innovators and collaborators together to try and solve this problem in a in a win way sorry a win win way whereby both the shipper and the carrier are better off for a contract that is more effective well gordon that's just an excellent introduction to the audience and our and our uh, virtual um, uh, participants all around the world and I think you're being a bit modest. I know that uh, you know NYSHEX has got some terrific uh, funding um, rounds, and you've done some great investment raising. And I think you've got a great dynamic team that's starting to promote NYSHEX in the marketplace, which really leads me to my question um, that our audience uh, is dying to know: What's your view on the market going forward? You know, we talked about Container Geddon, but now we have you know, part two, as we head into April and uh, 2021 and new contracting and continued contracting, how how likely are two-way committed contracts, um, you know, set up to play a role in what happens next? And is uh, what's the next chapter and how did we get here as far as NYSHEX is concerned? Yeah, it's a great question, Steve. And there's there's a lot of different perspectives on the market as to will it normalize after COVID or container getting is over, or is this the beginning of a structural shift? Um, difficult to say for sure, but I think there's a lot of reasons why this could be the beginning of a structural shift. And two, I think, very important reasons are things most people may not be thinking about. And the first one is the 
way in which carriers are operating through alliances, which fundamentally changes the supply and demand imbalance. We'll touch on that in just a second. And then the other one is the IMO emissions goals and how that might cause carriers to be a little bit more hesitant to order new ships and therefore constrain supply a little bit. Uh, and of course, that could have a big impact on the market. So those two things are, um, I think, likely to have a big impact. And with the COVID impact on the market, a lot of people aren't necessarily paying attention to these things. And the, those two points are likely to have a much longer term impact than just COVID, which is going to be hopefully a one or two year impact. So let's just dive in first to the alliances. It's no secret the container shipping industry has consolidated and alliances have further consolidated the, uh, the services that the carriers are offering. But for me, what's really interesting about the alliances is that it allows carriers to manage their supply such that it matches demand much better than before. And I'll just explain very simply how this mechanism with an alliance works. I mean, two different scenarios to illustrate the point. First one, imagine there's a world where a carrier has two sailings a week, let's just say from Shanghai to Long Beach, um, and the demand on that string for the week decreases by 10%. The carrier has a choice. They can either blank one of the sailings or sell both of the sailings or potentially bank two sailings. And in this case, if the demand is dropping by just 10%, the carrier's of avenue or lever is to blank by 50%. And in most cases, the carrier would decide it's better just to sail that second vessel at 80% utilization. And therefore, you create this you know, net 10% surplus in the market. And if every carrier is in a similar position, there's an, almost an incentive not to blank a sailing in order to make sure that they can at least get the revenue from that 80-odd percent that might come through in that scenario. That's what I think has for a long time happened. With alliances, it's very different. You know, imagine that there's five carriers, each with two sailings in the market, so a total of 10 sailings, and the demand falls by 10%. And the alliance then blanks one sailing to perfectly match supply with demand. Um, and of course, that results in balance. And I think most markets need balance to be healthy. But the point being is, in the past, there was almost an incentive for the carriers to sell their networks with excess capacity built in because they didn't have that scale to manage the supply effectively. But with the alliances, that changes the dynamic. And I think what we're going to see is less excess capacity in terms of vessels deployed in networks. Um, and that's going to certainly create more, I'd say, price stability in the market. Um, and that's just basic economics matching of supply and demand and, and price equilibrium. The other factor which a lot of people are not paying attention to is the way that carriers are now in the predicament with the IMO emissions goals. And of course, by 2050, the carriers have to be carbon neutral. And um, this requires carriers to rethink their vessels and the propulsion systems and the fuel systems, et cetera. And we all know that a useful life of a container ship is between 20 and 30 years, depending on the ship and how it's maintained, et cetera. So given that in 30 years from now, the carriers have to be operating ships that are carbon neutral and the technology required to do so isn't yet available. I think it's going to start putting a dampener on the carrier's willingness to order new ships. No one wants to order a ship and have it go obsolete before the useful life. And you know, if you just look at the Alpha Liner data, in 2010, the order book of the top five carriers was 28%. If you look at the Alpha Liner data today, the order book of the top five carriers is only 8% of the fleet. So the, the amount of new vessels coming into the, the service networks is actually declining as a result of this need for techno, the, the propulsion systems and the technology, et cetera, to be innovating um, in order to meet those carbon emission goals. And that, again, is a big structural change, which no doubt is going to have an effect on the market. So, of course, very difficult to predict what the future will be, but I think that container get in and the, the COVID impact, et cetera, is, is very short term, but there are some deeper structural changes happening, which may fundamentally change the way they operate or the, the market um, functions going forward. Yeah, it's really fascinating. I've been a student of looking at the uh, chartering market, and I totally echo what you say about the new builds being devoid as far as the carriers are concerned. I know Evergreen and I think Hyundai and, and a few others have some some new build orders, but you know, right now it's just, you know, Anything you can charter, and the charter rates are just going through the roof. And um, you know, the smaller the vessel, the faster, the nimble of the vessel, the easier to discharge. 
you know, in some ways it almost, almost reminds me of the A380, you know, the, Air, the, the, the Airbus where it was like the two decker takes a long time to discharge a, you know, a super, um, you know, a super max uh, container ship. So we'll see what happens there. But as far as uh, it relates to what you're doing with NYSHEX, do you look at yourself as, as playing a niche? Um, and is that a niche that, you know, spans uh, retail, chemical, freight forwarder, BCO? What's the niche that you're, you're, you're really targeting or is there one? Yeah, so it's an interesting question because the the, the value which NYSEX provides is this framework for making two-way committed contracts. And I think there's many different segments of the market, retail, et cetera, that will benefit from this. But you know, the most important thing is that it requires a change and a new way of trying to solve problems that um, – you know, in some cases, maybe new problems. For instance, you know, a lot of shippers haven't experienced a market where the supply and demand is is more tight than it has been for many years. So I think it's it's a new uh, process, it's a new solution to all this volatility that we described earlier. And quite frankly, the the most um, determining factor as to whether this is a good fit for a shipper or not is is that shippers' ability to control their supply chain and the shippers' willingness to innovate in order to create a supply chain that's more reliable and less risky, et cetera. So whilst we do see a lot of traction in, in certain segments, agriculture, retail, et cetera, we see traction also in other segments, um, for example, like furniture and, and uh, recyclables, et cetera. So I think it's more of a function of innovativeness and willingness to um, rethink a supply chain in order to make it more reliable and to make those landed costs more predictable, et cetera. Oh, I think you hit the nail on the head. I think when it comes to the innovation and the willingness, you know, to make that happen, I think it's a natural segue in into asking how does NYSHEX facilitate that two-way committed contract once you have that willingness and that ability to get in dialogue? What happens next, Gordon? Take us through the process. Yeah, great point. So first thing is to highlight that NYSHEX, all we do is facilitate this process. We don't come between the carrier and the shipper, the shipper and carrier typically have very strong relationships and we're just there to support the process. Um, and by facilitating, essentially, we do three things. So the first thing we do is we provide a, a framework that allows the carrier and the shipper to create a customizable contract, but where the terms are very clear. Uh, the second piece is that we have technology which integrates into the carrier's um, EDI feeds and other data sources so that we can help both the carrier and the shipper keep track of their contract and see whether it's compliant or not. And if something is off track, uh, to have enough time to fix it and therefore get the contract back on track. Um, and then the final thing that NYSHIX does is we have this uh, process for resolving exceptions. So if um, a shipment was supposed to make it onto a given vessel, but for some reason didn't, we have this uh, framework that allows us to very transparently track the root cause and then to be able to make a determination as to whether it may have been the shipper's fault or the carrier's fault, and then to settle that through a, a collection of liquidated damages, et cetera. So those are the three things, again, making the contracts customizable and clear, giving everyone visibility as to how they're performing, and then finally, amicably and fairly resolving those exceptions as they may occur. I, I love that. And, you know, I was thinking about um, the uh, first mover advantage. You know, I, I look at my own business at Ocean Audit, and, you know, some people might say, well, gee, you know, I can do that. You know, um, you know, Steve goes to a retailer or a exporter or importer and gets refunds uh, from overcharges. Right. Seems like a, a simple business. So kind of let's get into that business. You know, a, a domestic freight auditor might say, you know, who has trucking experience. Hey, I want to be an ocean freight auditor all, all of a sudden. And uh, the minute they go and do that, they, they kind of bomb out a little bit because they end up maybe just uh, cherry picking or glossing over the most important, um, you know, like a $10,000 invoice that should have been a thousand. Right. So the reason why I'm asking that or making this kind of analogy is it kind of lends me into one of the big questions that's been on my mind, Gordon. And I think one of the things is like, how does NYSHEX fit into a, a market where um, the carriers themselves right, are coming out with their own committed contract solutions? I think you have a first mover advantage, but I'd like you to elaborate for our audience on how you're going to make that happen. Yeah, so it, it's it's very interesting, and in my opinion, very positive that there is this move towards two-way committed contracts. I mean, we really believe that 
a big part of solving volatility and reliability comes from having clear agreements where both parties are incentivized to fulfill those agreements. And quite frankly, the carriers that are now bringing their own versions of these contracts to market is, is a wonderful thing. It, it really demonstrates that the industry is moving forward. In fact, I was talking with one exactly. carrier, exactly, and, and I was talking with one carrier executive yesterday, and he mentioned that the goal is within three years to have 80% of their freight moving on committed contracts um, and therefore being able to optimize their network, et cetera. So um, very, very positive development that the industry is starting to move towards two-way committed contracts. And of course, if you look at so many other industries, this is the norm. And I think it's about time container shipping caught up. Now, of course, NYSHIX doesn't have a monopoly on two-way committed contracts. But one of the advantages of NYSHIX being independent is that we can provide shippers and carriers with a, a multi-carrier framework or solution. And so, for instance, if you're a shipper, the benefit is that you would have one set of rules or one set of technology that you can implement and every carrier that you contract with uh, is following the same rules and it makes it easier for you to absorb that process internally, train your, your people to make sure that they're following the process correctly, uh, to resolve the exceptions and it creates efficiencies and it will most certainly improve compliance. So that's a very important point that NYSHIX is a, is a multi-carrier solution. Today we work with six out of the top 10 global carriers. In fact, hopefully soon we'll have more carriers on the platform as well. So it's a big advantage. There's another element which I think is important to highlight, and that is with NYSHIX, our entire mission is to fulfill our reliability goals. We want carriers and shippers to have a reliable outcome, and we're not in any way biased towards ensuring the carriers have a good outcome for each transaction or the shipper. I mean, we may need to make sure that the outcomes are fair. And so with NYSHIX, when a shipper or carrier join, we have a very transparent set of rules that explain how we would deal with every single shipment when something goes wrong, if there's congestion or a cyber attack, it's very clearly spelled out. And so when these events occur, it's completely transparent how we need to resolve it, and it makes it more amicable for the carrier and the shipper. And it's very different if you were, for example, a shipper dealing with a carrier and you ran into an issue, and the carrier were to make that decision based on perhaps different criteria or perhaps it might be a little bit biased because they want to protect their own interests. And so um, NYSHIX really, by being independent, provides more integrity, more fairness, and hopefully makes these relationships between the carriers even stronger, uh, or the carriers and the shippers, I should say, uh, even stronger. And I wanted to ask you, Gordon, I think, I think I know the answer to this, but you work with all areas of the supply chain. In other words, it's just not BCOs that can benefit from NYSHIX. It's freight forwarders and NBOs. Is that correct? Yes, it's correct. So we have uh, both VOCCs or vessel operators, steamship lines, NVOCCs or freight forwarders and BCOs. Um, and I think the, the sh those parties that join NYSHEX as members subscribe to the principles of having a contract that means something and having intentions to fulfill that contract and, and be willing to commit uh, with mutual accountability. So regardless of what type of uh, party is using NYSHEX, uh, we're, we're more than happy to provide the service. And we've seen, especially in NBOCs lately, benefit from NYSHEX both sure. as a supplier and also as a buyer um, by yeah. being able to give their their customers a commitment whereby they can back it up with a, a NYSHEX security and, and therefore the shippers feel more comfortable making contracts with NBOCCs knowing that there's that sort of fully committed contract which is supported or by not, NYSHEX. I think, I think that that is a tremendous tool for the, for the NVO and given the fact that many experts are steering a lot of BCOs to make sure they have a mix, I think that having that option in the NVO's pocket as they go and work with BCOs is extraordinary. So I'm really glad that, you know, we, we want to make sure that the market knows that you're offering this to a multitude of different shipper types. And uh, I think that's terrific. Gordon, I had one question that I was thinking about um, the stock market and I was thinking about like market makers on the buy and sell side, right? And as these carriers have their own programs and you talk about, you know, getting the uh, the NYSHEC contracts in the system so that clients can bid and, and, and make those contracts. 
What about the ability to get that level of supply from the ocean vendors? Do you see that as being something completely consistent? Do you see the ability that you can get more more contracted space? Um, is that something that you constantly fine tune with your carrier partners? Our business model has changed a lot since we first launched. <coughs> oh, sorry, Steve. Um, Take some water, man. But yeah, the, the business... <coughs> oh, man, I'm so sorry about that. Tough question. No, I'm just kidding. It wasn't the question. Um, but our business model has changed since we first launched where we were very much focused on sort of matching the supply and the demand and that sort of creating the market. Um, and that's actually not our focus. Our focus really is in the integ integrity of the contracting process itself. So whilst in some small cases, a carrier and a shipper may initiate the transaction through NYSHEX without a pre-existing relationship between the carrier and the shipper, um, it's not the it's not the norm. Um, so, the although we are building more suppliers and carriers as a network that use NYSHEX, it's very important just to keep in mind that we're not a traditional exchange in trying to match supply and demand, etc. So, the uh, the focus also has shifted towards more longer term contracts where the terms of those contracts actually need to be discussed in some amount of detail. For example, it's a multi-week contract with multiple lanes and different price points per lane and different allocations per origin and different equipment pools, etc. So, you know, by definition, there's a lot of direct uh, engagement between the carrier and shippers as they create these, you know, like I say, customizable contracts. Right. And, and, and thank you for that answer, because the reason why I, I wanted to make that a showcase of Kind of wrapping up is that you know you've increased uh, so much in TEU volume since your day one, uh, and now that you've been established for a great number of years, you know your TEU counts of what you have under contract is is pretty darn impressive. So I, I just I'm so pleased that we were able to introduce NYSHEX to our global audience today, Gordon. And for those that uh, are struggling to find out more information or would like somebody to talk to. How can our uh, our FreightWaves audience get in touch with your team? Yeah, the best way to do that is just go straight to NYSHEX.com and uh, fill in the form and identify your interest. And someone from our team will reach right out and we'll we'll get people signed up. And uh, we definitely look forward to engaging more with the FreightWaves audience. Well, this is a tremendous time uh, that we've had today. And uh, obviously, it's an issue that's going to uh, continue to um, uh, lend itself to further discussions. So I hope you come back on our virtual stage. And uh, to our audience, you've been watching uh, myself, Steve Ferrar, CEO of Ocean Audit, and my special guest, Gordon Downs, CEO of the New York Shipping Exchange, fondly known as NYSHEX. Gordon, thanks for joining us today and continued success. And let's talk soon. Absolutely. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate you having okay, me Okay, cheers. Have, have cheers. a great Bye. one. Thank you. Bye-bye.